here we are on our way to Kijaromijok, which is only located an hour and a half from Cusco City. Here we are at the Kijaromijok ruins. And as you can see, this is the same kind of polygonal architecture that is also located in Hatun Rumiyok Street, downtown Cusco, where the famous 12 angle stone is located. And if that area or Ushinu is considered to be 200, perhaps 300 years before the Inca Empire, we can see here these stones that have been some way, somehow, wrapped around with an unknown technique since it could be just a super Indian concrete, perhaps a geopolymer, an ancient geopolymer, the one that exists in Puma Punku, also in Egypt, and here in Kuya Rumiyok. Since this is the temple of the moon, and this is perhaps also as old as the one located on the 12 angle stone downtown Cusco, it should be perhaps two to three hundred years old. So again, who were these anonymous, unknown architects that built this and then pour this concrete, wrap around with wood, perhaps some kind of leaves, banana leaves or others, and it shows right here on the surface, no, it's not the typical limestone, organic granite stone that you can see everywhere in archaeological sites in the Inca Empire. So we have here a megalithic construction, an ancient megalithic construction, perhaps from an unknown culture way before the Inca Empire. But the Incas respect what was older, made by the, perhaps the elders, and didn't destroy this. So here we have another example of these megalithic structures, the few located here in the Americas, here in Quilla Rumijo, which is gonna be our next stop. Kiya Rumiyok is of easy access, you don't need to climb, but mostly is a moderate hike and a beautiful place. In the area, you can see polygonal Inca walls surrounded by the truly megalithic ones. There is a cut here that you can tell has been split, but not by natural forces or weather, mostly by unknown tools. Quilla Romiyok, the Rock of the Moon, also known as the Temple of the Moon. For the Andean Cosmovision, the moon is complete opposite to the sun, opposite but complementary. In all pre-Columbian cultures from the Americas, we can tell that they use a 13-month calendar based on 28 days, in more correlation with the Mother Earth or Pachamama and the feminine cycle. It's highly probable that this is a place for astronomical observations now, if you take into account 7 days at 4, is 28 days. So probably this was a point of observation for the different cycles or phases of the moon. But once you approach Kijarumiyok, the rock itself, you can tell there are strong vibrations, telluric and magnetic vibrations in this area. Whoever were in charge to choose this place, and built and sculpted in the rock were people aware of ley lines and magnetic forces of the earth. Standing in front of Kijarubiyok stone is really unbelievable and I try to organize my thoughts but uh, these are the reasons I think Kijarubiyok should be studied. It would be ideal to be studied and researched by architects, engineers, sculptors and geologists. I personally don't know if uh, there has been measurements taken of this uh, place and uh, of all the angles, squares and the semicircular sculpture of Kijarubiyok. 
I would like to know if each square that we can see in these pictures have the same measurements or what is the kind of inclination degree within each other or if the ones on the left are exactly the ones on the right. If you can see there are seven steps or seven squares, I would say, and uh, the ones on the left would be the same ones with the same inclination degree because it's not flat squares. They, are in, they have certain level of inclination in all of them. I'm not taking into account the one in the center. Now this place here confirms that Quilla Rumiyoc was also a place for astronomical observations. Uh, you can see approximately seven or eight holes or water mirrors. These water mirrors could be related to the Pleiades constellation as well. Here is Elisa, my travel companion, counting seven cuts on the bottom left side of the Kijerumijok stone. And we were not surprised because number seven is almost always present in all megalithic sites around Cusco. Just with a touch, they are so smooth, in certain areas vitrified, that the use of unknown technology is so evident here. These cuts reflect the same kind of style of architecture, of megalithic architecture, that you can also find behind Saxai Woman Fortress in Cusco. They are exactly the same done or built by the same unknown architects. During our exploration, Elisa felt compelled, attracted to approach Kijarumijok stone. In that place, she felt embraced by a superior energy, peace and harmony that connected to the area. It seems that we are used to temples with walls, doors, gates and security. But in these areas, we have to approach it with the right intention, with the right and open heart to feel the connection between Mother Earth and Father Sky. Finally, it was the end of the day and we decided to explore the northern side of Kijarubijok area and we found this cave with petroglyphs, with rock art that depicts anthropomorphic figures. We assume the cave has been sealed by the religious belief in colonial times. In that time, it was believed that all these tunnels connected with the underworld. But we know now the ancient architects were experts with underground tunnels that connect several sites in Cusco. It was the belief of the priest and the Catholic leaders in that time that this network of tunnels connected with the underworld with evil forces. But now we know that this network of tunnels are located practically in all Cusco and also connects with all colonial churches. These churches were built over ancient temples and the main altars of each church may be sealing or blocking the entrance or exit of this tunnel. If you like this video, please subscribe and stay in touch. Thank you so much.